Greenhouse warming theory is rapidly becoming the most expensive mistake ever made in the history of science. Video 3. Warming from 1975 to 1998 resulted from depletion of the ozone layer caused by humans. Ozone is a trace gas in Earth's atmosphere that's found primarily in the ozone layer extending from 9 to 22 miles above Earth. There are only about 10 molecules of ozone for every million molecules of other gases in the ozone layer. But tiny amounts of ozone are extremely important in atmospheric chemistry because these molecules consisting of three atoms of oxygen are continually being formed and destroyed in an endless ozone-oxygen cycle. When a molecule of ozone absorbs solar ultraviolet B radiation, the molecule is dissociated into a molecule of oxygen and an atom of oxygen, releasing heat. A typical molecule of ozone lasts only about eight days on average. Thus, where there is ozone in the lower stratosphere, there is a higher than normal air temperature. The higher the concentration of ozone, the higher the surrounding air temperature. The ozone layer protects life on Earth from the highest energy solar radiation normally reaching the lower atmosphere. At Earth's surface, this very energetic ultraviolet B radiation is observed to cause sunburn, cataracts, depression of the immune system, and genetic damage that can lead to skin cancer and mutations. The total amount of ozone contained in a vertical column up through the atmosphere varies by month and by latitude, as shown with colors in these surface and cross-section plots. Note the total column ozone concentrations are lowest in the tropics and during the summers, and highest at mid to high latitudes, especially during winter and spring. These polar locations are the same locations and times when ozone depletion is greatest compared to values before 1970. The higher the concentration of ozone, the more ultraviolet B radiation is absorbed in the ozone layer, the higher the temperature of the ozone layer, and the lower the air temperature just above Earth's surface. When the ozone layer is depleted, more ultraviolet B radiation than normal is observed to reach Earth, cooling the ozone layer and warming Earth. Ultraviolet B radiation has enough energy to penetrate oceans to hundreds of feet so that it sunburns life forms such as those that make up plankton and those that inhabit coral reefs. Bleaching of coral reefs is more likely due to sunburn than to changes in water temperature because temperature of water changes very slowly. Because ultraviolet energy penetrates oceans so deeply, increases in ultraviolet radiation warm oceans very efficiently, raising ocean heat content as is clearly observed. In the 1960s, chemical engineers developed chlorofluorocarbon gases, CFCs for short, that became widely used as refrigerants, spray can propellants, solvents, and foam blowing agents. CFCs became very popular because they do not react chemically with most other materials or gases and are therefore much safer and cheaper to use. Many CFCs have atmospheric lifetimes of more than 50 years. This graph summarizes the increased production of CFCs shown in green related to the increases in ozone depletion shown in black and increases in temperature shown in red. In 1974, Molina and Rowland discovered that CFCs move slowly over three to five years up into the stratosphere, where they are broken down by ultraviolet radiation to release atoms of chlorine, especially in very cold environments. Under the right circumstances, one atom of chlorine can lead to the destruction of more than 100,000 molecules of ozone, creating the Achilles heel of Earth's climate. In 1985, scientists discovered widespread depletion of the ozone layer over Antarctica during the winter, forming what became known as the Antarctic Ozone Hole, where ozone concentrations were reduced by 50 to 70 percent compared to levels observed before 1970. In 1987, scientists had helped political leaders at the United Nations frame the Montreal Protocol on substances that deplete the ozone layer mandating cutback of CFC production beginning in January 1989. Sure enough,
the increases in concentrations of CFC gases in the atmosphere stopped in 1993. The increases in ozone depletion stopped in 1995. And the increases in global temperatures stopped in 1998. Humans had caused global warming beginning around 1975 by manufacturing large amounts of CFC gases. Humans had stopped the increase in global warming by 1998 by substantially reducing the amounts of CFC gases being manufactured. Depletion of the ozone layer caused by CFC gases explains why ozone depletion and surface temperatures began increasing around 1975 and stopped increasing around 1998 why the temperature of the ozone layer decreased during this same period, and why global warming was primarily of minimum temperatures during the winter when ozone depletion is greatest. Total column ozone is constantly changing at every location. This animation shows daily average ozone in most of the southern hemisphere for each day from September 1st through October 31st, 2006. Note that the Antarctic ozone hole changes daily, but typically covers most regions at latitudes greater than 55 degrees south. The extent of the Antarctic ozone hole explains why warming was greatest on the Antarctic Peninsula, why southern oceans surrounding Antarctica showed major warming, and why the Bellinghausen Sea warmed 1 degree Celsius. Ozone depletion in the Arctic region explains why ice covering the Arctic Sea has been decreasing at a rate of 3.2 percent per year since 1979. All of these observations cannot be explained as directly using greenhouse warming theory. Ozone in the ozone layer is known as good ozone because it absorbs highly energetic solar ultraviolet B radiation protecting life on Earth. But ozone can also be formed just above the ground level by chemical reactions between nitrogen oxides and volatile organic compounds. Ground level ozone is formed when pollutants are emitted, for example, by cars, power plants, industrial boilers, refineries, and chemical plants, and that these react chemically in the presence of sunlight. Ground level ozone is known as bad ozone because it is highly toxic to people and to the environment. Bad ozone is the primary ingredient in smog. Ground level ozone is created as a result of pollution in heavily populated industrialized regions. When more ultraviolet B radiation reaches Earth's surface, it dissociates more ground level ozone, warming the air. This explains why global warming was observed to be greatest in heavily industrialized regions and why global warming was twice as great in the northern hemisphere containing 89% of world population. Ozone is also depleted by volcanic eruptions, described in the next video. Thank you.